Friday, shot of Footycast live from back studios. We bloody got there, Skeeter. The year is over, at least here in the West. Uh, we have finals coming up. It's been a huge season. That was the Southern River Band boys, and I do just want to give them a quick shout out. Fourth on the ARIA charts nationally for their new album, DIY, sitting under Cold Chisels, best of, and a couple of others I've never fucking heard of, Skeeter. They're going absolutely beautifully, and it can only be put down to their association with this show, I'm assuming, Skate. No, we'll claim any credit that uh, is rightfully not ours, and uh, yes, the Southern <laughs> River Band doing a beautiful job. It, uh, it used to be called Mad Monday. It was just Sad Monday for the Dockers because they, uh, they were not good enough, and the Eagles were putrid, and it just sums up the year. <laughs> well, they were five yeah. wins for the season, mind you, for the West Coast Eagles, probably, if you said pre-season, about around the mark. So the Dockers, uh, their fall from grace was quite spectacular. But, yeah, quite a dramatic day yesterday uh, at Marvel than uh, here in Perth. Before we get into that, Skeeter, um, I went to Froth Town. So we've been promoting that on the show yes. the last uh, four or five weeks. Claremont Showgrounds, 23rd, 24th of August. It is done. It's by. You don't have to buy your tickets anymore. I went Friday. So I mosey in there after work, just absolutely working myself to my bones. So at 8 p.m. I get off radio, I go, I better get out of Froth Town. Went in there and it was a great setup. Got to be honest, way better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. <laughs> there were so many people there. Um, I'm, I'm, I think they had a massive weekend. But I reckon I was in there for, I don't know, 20 seconds and someone, one of our great fans I'm assuming, accosted me. Where's Skeeter? <laughs> Someone <laughs> tell me where's Skeeter? When's Skeeter getting here? Are you where do we have a frothy with Skeeter? Mate, I couldn't bloody move in this joint. There was 5,000 people. I reckon 4,000 of them were looking for you. Where were you? Uh, I actually went to lunch with uh, some old schoolmates of mine uh, in the Leadville so, precinct. So Victoria Westville. was away. She's in Bali still. Mm. Uh, and so uh, <laughs> decided to go from just neutral to, to third gear in a bit of a hurry. And so by, <laughs> by about six o'clock, it was, uh, it was game on, so to speak. But uh, yeah, it was... I wish I'd got to Froth Town, but probably wouldn't have uh, done my reputation any good. Well, I texted you and said, get here. And you, and you wrote back, I can't speak. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I meant that I was talking to someone. Yeah, in, uh... <laughs> oh, but yeah, had a big day on the shoulders. Anyway. Yeah, very, very good. Well, I enjoyed myself down there. It was bloody brilliant. A um, couple of reminders for you all. San Cisco, uh, that is confirmed, playing at Shelter on November 8th. So you can go to... The Shelter website, uh, shelterbrewing.com.au, to go and get your tickets for that. Um, we are moving our focus very quickly, though. Finals are here. The biggest grand final party in Perth is the final. It is at Subiaco Oval. Uh, uh, everything is well underway for that. So the same guys that run Bar Pop run this one and Froth Town, to be honest. So we've got huge stages. We've got uh, pre-match chats and panels with huge footy stars. We've got a VIP tent there. They've got bars galore. They've got a silent disco. They've got a DJ set afterwards. There's kick-ons after. Uh, and, of course, you can watch all of the footy there. So if you don't know what you're doing grand final today, I just told you. So that is September 28th, Subiaco Oval. Make sure you get down there. We'll be down there, Skeeter. We'll be holding a few things down there. So we'll see if we can get a beer into Skeet on grand final day as well. Last reminder also, NFL Draft League. The Shelter NFL Draft League had a couple of videos come through. Last entries are cut off. Uh, Wednesday this week. So I want to see a 60 second or less video as to why you should be in the Shelter NFL Draft League. There's a draft night at Shelter on the 4th of September, which is a Wednesday. When does the season start? The Thursday? Yeah, not long after that. Yeah, it's it might be. I'm yep. pretty sure it's a Thursday. And so inclusive, this might get a couple more entries in. Inclusive of uh, the entry into the Draft League, you get a full night on the piss with... Well, actually, my wife's probably listening. Just a, a full night of a couple of beers down at uh, Shelter Brewing for the draft night. It's a live draft night at Shelter Brewing. In Bustle. In Bustle. And you'll be there. I'm driving down there. So if you're from Perth wow. and you're a good bloke or good lady, you can come down in my car and we'll drive down together. This is on um, Wednesday week, must Yeah, be. absolutely. Wow, okay. Yeah. I haven't cleared that with uh, the home No, you need yet, to so. probably get on the babysitting duty. Sort yeah. of oh, no, my wife's not coming. She can stay oh, okay. right here and look after the kids. Uh, or your daughters will be available, I'm sure. Shelterbrewing.com.au is where all you get all your good stuff. Get discount codes there as well. And shelterfootycast.com.au is where you can send us an email or interact with the show. Will Schofield, Mark Reddings, Shelterfootycast. 
Huge weekend, Skeeter, and the top eight is locked in with finals announced. Are we happy with this scheduling? Are we excited with some of these matchups coming up? I think there's a standout. I think there's a real standout on Friday night between the Bulldogs and Hawthorne. Oh, Battle of the Bridge on the Saturday Arvo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just think the, the two best teams in terms of in form at the moment, and I'm, I still think City deserve to be Premiership favourites. Right. Um, I think the Bulldogs and Hawthorne's the sexiest game on a Friday night at the MCG. Okay, I, I can agree with you there. So Port Adelaide Geelong will kick things off Adelaide Oval Thursday night. Thank God Thursday night footy's back. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, bloody good. It's only one. So it's the last Thursday because that'll be after that. It'll be your oh, Fridays and Saturdays. It's a little tease, and then it's back off the agenda. Yep. Then Bulldogs Hawthorne Friday night. I agree. MCG that should be huge. And you could say that's if you ranked these sides, not ladder position, but ranked, right? You'd, I'd have Sydney at one. You'd have Sydney at one. Yeah. Who have you got? Two, three, and four. As in, in terms of. Uh, who you think is going to win the flag and 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 take away who they're playing right now? Just one to eight. If you don't have to play anyone, who have you got? One, two, three, four. Yeah, I mean, well, if you if you not play uh, Sydney alongside Hawthorne and, and the Bulldogs. Yeah, they're in the top four, right? Mm, and yeah. maybe, uh, so, mate, what I saw to Port Adelaide yesterday, it's pretty good. I was very impressed, very impressed. So they, I I reckon live they're the they're in the top three sides I've seen live. Sydney being one of them, mm. Hawthorne being another, and Port being the third. So that's my my top three. And then probably Bulldogs at four. Brisbane, I, I think they've cost themselves without um, a home quali- a qualifying final double chance. But it's going to be a good weekend of footy skater. So um, that's in two weeks' time, of course, the prelim final uh, buy. We will get through some reviews of the sides that haven't made it over the next couple of shows, but we're going to get through the weekend that just happened first. So Thursday, Monday, will be some reviews of the years gone by for um, some teams we're going to put in the bin, and there's a lot of them. Um, I'm assuming I know what your take is from the goal umpire being hit by a full water bottle. You actually was watching the game, and they, they said they had to – uh, basically sub out uh, the goal umpire and Chelsea Roffey came in and, and replaced the, the young bloke who was there and it was, I thought, he's done a hammy, he's done a calf. And then you saw the vision of the, the water bottle being hurled over the fence, not by whom, but certainly it came from a, a spectator who quickly, um, as I say in police terms, absconded. Uh, but, yeah, got him on the scorn and, and, and drew blood. So, yeah, I mean, it, yeah. we don't need to spend long on this except if they can locate either he or she, I think, I've got no issue with a 10 year, 15 year lifetime ban you from can't this. can't be throwing stuff it's at just anybody. And it's, I don't even get the theory of the umpiring was 11 1 in favour of St Kilda at that stage. It's a goal umpire. I mean, <laughs> don't throw it at anyone, but that's just a coward act. And oh, yeah, I hope they absolutely. And the AFL has been pretty strong the last 12 months, to be honest with you, whether it's been from racial vilification from spectators at venues or even on social media. If they can locate them, they'll, um, they'll put you away and. and discard you for a long period of time given the clip absolutely um a couple of uh, uh suspensions over the weekend so liam jones hasn't come back yet but i reckon he's got to be in trouble against aaron cadman so that's huge news for the bulldogs yeah oh, yeah again okay, i'll keep keep, keep. I, I think we got to move past what we think is right and wrong skater in terms of the the look at the game and what's dangerous and what's not we have to start looking at it with the scope of what what's the league going to do? Whether we agree with it or not. So so, so how should he have tackled? How should you he can't pin an arm like that? We just not. We just they, they're doing. they now. That's the effective way of of. Yeah, making sure players uh, are enable unless they can get boot to ball. That's the most effective way for players. We see it's the chicken wings being used so right. regularly now, but. It's how you get them to ground after that is the question. Yeah. So if you don't roll them, you don't drop your knees, you don't do this and that, then that sort of stuff happens. So I think he gets a minimum a week because of the – what is it? The significance to cause injury or the, the danger to cause uh, – Cabin danger. played on, didn't he? Hey? Cabin played Yeah, on. his head barely hit the ground. But, but – Yeah, I know. I, oh, I, 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 I hate seeing a player miss a final – because of an incident like that, I'm just, I know I'm going probably living in the dark no, ages. I but I don't, I'd hate you. How gutted would you be if, yeah. that, if that was you, and you legitimately trying but, to lay but a This tackle. is what we've been talking about know, all year, Skater. This was going to happen. Someone before the grand final or someone before finals is going to give some tackle that's not dangerous at all, and it'll go to court. Correct. Well, <laughs> you know, right. there'll be there, this will blow up in, in uh, spectacular fashion. A pretty huge, final. huge, 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 hugely important to Western Bulldogs because they don't have the cattle. He's yeah. You know, that's why they chase Tom Barris. That's why they're looking at Josh Battle. He's the guy, Liam Jones, that you you 
you think is probably going to be, um, if not the most, no, the Bont's the, the star of the show at, at the Bulldogs, but he's so important to their back line. Cosy Pickett bump on Darcy Moore three weeks. Oh, man. The, the, this one here. So, okay, he's electing to bump, but Darcy Moore, 0.2 of a second before he makes contact, Darcy Moore's standing up. And then within the space of half a second, he's sliding on the ground. Now, that's not Darcy Moore's fault. Like, he, he's just trying to play the ball and play the game. But it's not Cozzy Pickett's fault either. Is it? No. What's I, he meant to do? He, 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 if you're, you know, I'm not just calling him a steam trainer, but you're going in one direction and you've made a decision and then what happens in front of you changes. It's like a car crash. Mm. Can't do anything about, you can't do anything about it. It doesn't matter if you put the brakes on or not. Yeah, That's what, what that one was. What was the result with Moore? He went off, didn't he? Yeah, was don't he subbed know. out? Yeah, don't, might have been. Yeah, yeah might I'm pretty have been sure. Out. I'm pretty sure there was. Yeah, so that, that's the outcome. That's that's outcome gonna, over action. That's gonna hurt him. That'd be a nice thing in the in the off season, just to have a look at this outcome over action stuff. If we start suspending the bad actions, but maybe that was a bad action. I don't know. Hey, yeah, I thought he was subbed out. Yeah, okay. All right, let's get into the footy. I think we're going to talk about these two Western Australian side. Will Schofield, Mark Redding, Shell Footy Cast. Skeet and Scowie, eight from nine. Both. Did we really? What happened there? Oh, we both clearly. Picked, well, I picked. I didn't pick Freo. I picked Port. I think we both picked Port last who, week. I, I think changed to Freo after I learnt the news. And anyway, just, who, who do you want to do? West Coast or Freo? Uh, well, let's be honest. Freo's a story of the last twenty-four right. hours. Great. Port Adelaide defeat Fremantle by twenty points at Optus Stadium. I'm going to start on this one, Skeet. I usually throw to you. I, I don't think we should be surprised in any way the result of this game. All on the line. Biggest game of the year. Um, within striking distance at three-quarter time, the moment was there to be grabbed, and they didn't grab it, and they've, they haven't done it all year. This is how Fremantle have played for the entire season. They haven't taken their chances, and when moments um, are there to stand up, they have either fumbled, they have either succumbed to the pressure, they have completely lost their shit, and they haven't stood up. Now, you can say that no Tracy, no Pierce, no Darcy is significant. Of course it is. Having basically your three pillars not playing – that makes a difference. Yes, of course it does. But regardless of that fact, in moments that mattered on the weekend, yesterday, Fremantle fumbled, Fremantle coughed it up, Fremantle made the wrong decision, um, and, and Port Adelaide didn't. And Port Adelaide, Port Adelaide are the second best side in the comp, and that's why. And then Freo aren't a top eight side, and that's why. Yeah, I don't think I could have summed it up any better. The two Fs spring to mind, uh, fumbling. And then the finals gone. It, it, that, that I thought they were so clean, and there were times I'm talking about Port Adelaide here, like yep. Jason Horn Francis. To actually watch him live, yep. If if I said to you in five years he's going to have won a Brownlow medal, I don't think you'd be surprised. No, no. yeah, he, they've got a few though. He's got that scope. They've got a few. The only, the only thing that he's got an issue with, he's got Rosie and Butters in the same side taking votes off him. Is that the best midfield in the competition as we speak? But you know, like if if they're all humming, yeah, they're going to be pretty tough to beat. If you know two home finals, they've obviously got to go overcome that September hurdle. But yeah, I think you're right with the Dockers. Again, they weren't terrible. They were. They, were uh, they knew the, the scenario. I will slightly challenge you. I don't, I'm not. I'm not saying I know this for Bates and. Why don't you just fully I spoke to? You? Oh, well, I, because I I don't know for a fact, but I spoke to uh, David Mundy, who was in the lift with Jamie Graham, and he said, "Look, the boys watching the game downstairs." He said, "No, no, no, they're not. They're not. They're not watching it at the moment. Mm. But we'll keep them uh, across what happens just before the bounce, which they did because they're out out in the middle. Mm. So no, just going back to last week, where you, <laughs> so I'll tell you, you haven't been in the rooms before the game. You've never played a game of footy. This is what's happening. I went, okay, well, you're probably right, Scott. Hopefully you enjoyed the uh, audio there from last <laughs> week. <laughs> and you completely, it was like that dismissive, uh, you've never played the game, how would you know? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Went, oh, oh, right, oh, that, that was going, like. How do you? But oh. they're saying yesterday that the Dockers didn't have a look at uh, the Carlton. Of course, that would have been a bit of a crosser because it was so tight. And it, their, their, their year basically was over with about a mid-15 to go. They would have fucking been sitting around watching it. I can guarantee you, you mate. I mean, right in the middle of Optus. I can guarantee you, right before they run out, they'd be squirming around, wondering what was going on. Someone would have got a TV screen in front of them, I'm sure. Skeeter, I'll tell you what, it was... That moment there, which we actually captured, Jaden, um, to have a bit of a look at, I was on the ground too, waiting for them to run out. And 
we were meant to be rehearsing in inverted commas for Fox footy and we just cut the rehearsal because we had Matt Pavlich, huge Freo man, and Kath Lachlan, huge Freo lady. I was right on the scene to capture this skater. Just have a look at Matt Pavlich watching. Uh, this was this is the last set about. So basically St Kilda kicked the goal. He is absolutely up and about. He, he was all over it. Look at the crowd. The crowd was going absolutely nuts. I've never seen a crowd go like that before a game started. I Kath have. was on about. Yeah. I, I think – and then they – yeah. I mean, it was such an anticlimactic uh, next two hours because of what happened. The only time I can remember that was when the – it was before a derby. It was last year. And they had the Matilda on the big, big screen. And it was the same type of feeling. There was a celebration. And then we yeah went what, back to business. Why wouldn't uh, Optus Stadium put the game on? Oh, look, yeah, we were asking that ourselves. Oh, I, think, I think there is a, a – a sponsorship agreement in terms of they they got to get away their activation. So uh, logically and being pragmatic, that's the way to do it. They didn't. Fremantle, I was so impressed with Brayshaw earlier. I thought he was you know terrific. Swidkowski, I think eleven or twelve score involvements from twenty two touches. He was really hit good. the scoreboard. He was I reckon close to their best. Um, again, they weren't terrible, but I've got to pay tribute also. We talked about the midfield of Port just in brief. I thought that defensively, they really set up well. And they, you know, Voss, I think, I think two goals, but he didn't give me enough to, to, to really... No, they missed Tracy. Missed Tracy. There's no doubt about that. They kicked nine goals. They butchered the footy in front of goal when they had their opportunities in the first half. But again, we're, we're, this is a bit of a theme with the Dockers in terms of the missed opportunities. I think Justin Longby was right. It wasn't a wasted season because... They, they learn things, but they, they completely, the last month, it was almost like the they couldn't change a theme and a, a trend which had developed with their footy. And yeah, they you know they go from what, third to 10th in the space of a month or so. Yeah, it'd be disappointing as a Freo fan to watch that fade. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's a wasted season either, but every season that you don't play finals, um, wasted's not the right word, but but it, it is though. It, you, you 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 play footy to play finals, and you and you play footy to win premierships. Now you don't win the premiership every year. In fact, if you win one, it's very you know very fortunate to win one. But that's what you're playing for. But you you play to give yourself a chance to win a flag. And so if you don't make finals, you have no chance. And so it's a it's a hopeless season. It's, I, I, it's, I would argue that Docker supporters today, with the season finished, would be more upset than West Coast Eagles fans because you knew in early in this year that the Eagles March. weren't going to play finals footy and you know, could you win five or six games January. up until a month ago? Up until a month ago, you said they wouldn't win a game full stop. That's how confident you were of a, a, a bleak season for the Eagles. Up until a month ago, it, Fremantle fans were, and, and we, we all were thinking... Percentage from second. Top four, is it, you know, home four. They miss. That's a, you know, that's a, that's a, a hugely disappointing finish and... Yeah, um, it's, it has to burn in their guts for the rest of the, the off-season. And and in brief, we'll, we'll talk about this maybe more on Thursday, but you've got three first-round draft picks. You've got Shea Bolton probably going to command two. Do you pull the trigger with two first-round draft picks? I had a call on radio last night. I said, why not go and get the best three young players in that bracket that you can and continue to build the list? Oh, it's not a, it's an option. It, it's not a completely daft argument. No. But I do understand the Bolton discussion as well and what he could add i think they'll do something uh, yeah I, I yeah if the if the worst thing that happens is they go to the draft take top top uh, three top 20s fine but i just don't think they will i, uh, I think they, they'll lose, use at least one somewhere yeah you gotta you don't want to pay overs for shea bolton he's oh, two, fir- two first yes, overs. i think absolutely it is. is he's hey and and you're a big fan I, I like the way he plays his footy but he's highly inconsistent he you know um Small forwards. So Switkowski can have a great game every now and then. Michael Walters can have a great game every now and then. Michael Frederick. So these are the small forwards he's mm. competing with. They can all set a game alight every Tough now position. and then. Tough position to play, though. Same as Shea Bolton. He's not every week spitting out threes in the brown, though. Like, every now and then he's going to flip a game. But what he does do is if they put him in the midfield, which they don't do with a lot of those guys I just mentioned – He's suddenly that he's a he's a player they don't have in that midfield. No, but right. Swakowski's done a bit of that going to the midfield. But you're right, he, he's that X factor player again. The two first rounders makes you squirm because you think, oh, they gee, can't play that. We've seen we've seen that go pear shaped. And look, you look at what the, the Cats gave up for Jeremy Cameron. Yes, and whatever they gave up, it was it was worth every cent. I, That's I, a good point. I think. Um, That's a good but point. this is this is slightly different. Jeremy Cameron's a uh, you know, a key forward who can. Uh, Shea Bolton's not that type of player. If, if he gets, you know, fifteen possessions a game, that's probably, you know, a couple of goals. That's 
That's good. So I've just been wary from a Fremantle perspective of just spending all your bickies on one player in that manner. But I do agree that they do need for, – for, for next year, they need to, to fill that, that middle tier of 25 years of age, which he is. Could they get him and Liam Baker for the three first rounders? Would you do that? I don't think they need Liam Baker. It's not someone that I'd be mm. paying any money for, to be honest. Um, so no, is the answer. I think Port Adelaide playing a grand final off what I saw. They're going to beat Geelong easily at Adelaide Oval on Thursday and then uh, they'll roll someone in a prelim and they play in a grand final. Whether or not they can win it, that's another question. So you, you reckon that their home, their home issues deal, in September? The real deal is because of their defensive... Mm. Uh, they just look a more competitive, contested and defensive side than I've seen over the last four years. They've been top four the last four years, Skater. Mm. Bear in mind, they, they got thump absolutely spifflicated against the Brisbane Lions about two months ago. They've never <coughs> they've never defended as well as they're defending, and that is why I Agreed. like them to make the grand final. All right, West Coast, Geelong. Geelong defeat West Coast by 93. Congratulations, West Coast. You got through another season. Well, you got through a season without losing by 100 points. There's your positive off the top. I know people think that I'm not positive about West Coast. Well, there's some positivity, Skater. Didn't lose a game by 100. Brilliant work. Brilliant. You just a, just a touch of sarcasm attached. The Cats to that. led by 100 at points half at half time. Mark mm. Reddings. Mm. This was, and we knew this was coming. Yeah, absolutely. Way. And this is this isn't being smart asses after the fact. And, and the team they put out, the yeah, it, everything added up to basically a, a 93 point loss. So, in essence, and again, I didn't see a lot of this game. I was doing waffle, but the the bottom line is the Jared Schofield position now, having lost his last two games by a combined total, I think, of 158 points. Not his fault entirely, given the players have to bear responsibility. But if you are if you are moving forward, that has to be an element of a decision-making with regards to the results. Well, the question for me is, well, okay, if, if it's Jared Schofield, how do you get those games out of this playing group? <clears throat> how do you how do you remove oh, sorry? <clears throat> How do you remove those games out of this playing group? How do you – does Jared Schofield, can he do that? Maybe he can't. Maybe it's the Geelong factor, players injured, you know, you know McGovern, Barris, those sort of guys not playing. Their midfield got ripped apart, Skeeter. No defensive transition. So how, how does a coach – and what does a coach do to this group? Like does, does – you know, who's the very best coach in the land? Is it Craig McRae? Is it Sam Mitchell? Like if they suddenly – Got Sam Mitchell back to the club. Is next year West Coast highly competitive? No. So this is exactly what I said a month ago. Everyone had the absolute sooks over. This job is, I think I used the words poison chalice. This job is a, is a job that if you're an assistant coach around the league and you're looking at it, I don't know how you change what you just copped. To finish the year, I don't know how you change that. And I'm that you know certainly why I'm not a coach. I don't know what you go and do to that group. No, and look to, to contrast what you've said. Alistair Clarkson has obviously gone the up, opposite view. Said, you know, it's a it's still a, a valued job because of the resources, because of what the club has historically. So, do you think, yeah. I, do you think Clarkson might be a bit um, bit old school? Do you think he probably is? He yeah, probably maybe stuck in the past a tiny bit. He's gone to North Melbourne and well done yeah, absolutely nothing there. Well, yeah, well, look, North Melbourne. Finished second last, I think, for the umpteenth time in the last mm. few years. They did put it this way for me. They showed a lot more than the Eagles at times this year. Eagles had a little spell there where they won a couple, beat what the the Dockers and beat Melbourne. North Melbourne they fell away very badly. But yeah, for, back to the Eagles. Yeah, it's it's the list that they are going to have to try and uh, reinvigorate over the next you know couple of months. And of course, the the exit interviews will start, which you've been through yeah. um, in your career and. Do you go in there a bit like, and you remember I was made redundant um, a couple of years ago, that, that sort of sickening feeling of not knowing what your future is? Or do you, ba do you, do you, do you basically know? I had a few few times over my career where I wasn't sure or uncontracted. But basically, if you're contracted, it's a, a – yeah, I, they're, they're the two things. If you're contracted for the next few Feel years, it's literally roll in, you get your program. It's not a this is how the year was because you just get feedback the whole year. Yeah. You're not going in there to find out what they think. How, how long does it take? Uh, if it's if you're contracted, ten minutes. Okay. If you're not contracted, which I was twice, I think, um, you're pretty much doing the rounds before you get in there to see what's going on. Doing the numbers. Yeah, I remember going into Peter Swimich's office like late in, in. It was at the end of my third year, so my first contract ended, 
And he said, look, and I, I, I was just looking for someone to tell me how it is. Mm. As a player, you always just want clarity. Someone. Yeah. And if you're out, you're out. And I remember saying to him, tell me, no one would tell me. I was like, Suma, tell me. And it's why I've always respected to him, Suma. He just told me, he said, mate, it's between you and one other player for the last spot on the list. And this was before the last game of the year. He said, you better play well. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, played down in Peel, had 30, kicked a couple. Hang on, played down in – oh, so you're playing Waffle footy. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. I, sorry, I'm trying to get the – so um, <laughs> are you at liberty to say who that player was yep. that missed out? Jamie McNamara, okay. um, one of my great Good mates. Good fella. Yep, one of my great mates. Went on to Captain East Frio. Um, and, yeah, and he knows about this as well. Um, but that's, that's what footy's like. So there'll be some ruthless – Decisions, um, but how ruthless can you be with your list? I mean, you can't just throw ten people out the boat, can you? Um, I reckon they'll go pr- pretty close to it. I that mean, many? I mean, they they they've got um, draft picks that they're going to use. They will get draft picks in for players they're going to lose. You know, Tom Barris is gone. Yes, I th- I think Jack Darling's a maybe as a draft as a trade. trade. So you get. Maybe picks for him. So I think you'll have... You won't get a lot for Jack, you know that. What would you get for Jack? Oh, gee. I, you know, I, Third I rounder? Yeah, it's 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 not... Second rounder? N- no. Third, oh, third, third rounder? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so you, you think we've seen the last of Jack, Tom Barris. Maybe. What about Dom Sheed in terms of his... Sheeder, maybe. Yeah, Sheeder's uncontracted. Um, but there, there's lots of guys. They've got, they got at least 10 guys without a contract. So... You're rolling in there mm. to answer your question. We, yep. you, you, you're nervous, yeah. But you, but most really of them, won't, most of them won't find out today. Like they won't find out. So today's and not, not discarding today's. You do because I saw a few of the boys when I was out at lunch on Friday, just in, in leader having a bite to eat, doing yep. some of the OBH. What are they doing? That's fine. Today a bit the same. Is it sort of Tuesday, Wednesday that that gets sort resolved? Yeah, but the list list final list lodgement doesn't happen until bloody after finals. So but you want to know earlier. There'd, so, there'd be some guys not nah, see you later, we're not, but there'd be some guys going, we're gonna to wait to see what happens with these trades, to see what we get in, to see how many picks we're gonna have at the draft before we make list decisions. Yeah. So I'd say there's probably up to four guys that'll get that chat, which is hey, right now, if we called it, you're done. But if we don't get what we want at the trade table, then we might have you on for a rookie season. I don't know. Mm. So, yeah, there are going to be lots of changes at West Coast. There needs to be. Uh, there was lots of chat um, said from 6PRs, Brad Hardy, saying that Don Pike is texting. Uh, During texting. the match? I mean, it sounded pretty like uh, uh, quite, fact, sourced, yeah. quite sourced information. Yeah, that's so it's, it's, Texting who? The coaches? Well, apparently. I'm, I'm just reading what you came up with. Uh, would, would, that would surprise me. Yeah, I mean, it would surprise me too. Um, yeah, would be su- surprising. Yeah, maybe because he's an interim coach, he feels if that is the case that he has that. Liberty. If, I don't know. If I could just finish on the West Coast Eagles coaching job, I, I spent Friday on on six PR taking talk back on this. Yep. If if I hear one more suggestion of, I'll name him right. Hmm. If I hear Paul Ruse, he lives in Hawaii. Yes, Paul Ruse ain't coaching difficult. West Coast. Nathan Buckley, James Hurd, uh, Mick Malthouse, no, John, no, no John one, Wersold. One, no one, one, one that keep one that keeps coming up is Peter Sumich. Sumich hasn't coached an AFL club for six years. Hasn't been in the system. You can't just click your fingers and because you watch at home or you might have been doing some junior coaching, you, you're back in. What about Bluey McKenna? He was Bluey McKenna. Place. There you go. There's one. <laughs> Don Bluey. Don Pike. He's the CEO, people. Why are we saying Don Pike? Who, who's saying Don Pike? Mate, it's every, mate, people are genuinely convinced that some people are, that Don Pike is a, is a candidate for the job. He is the CEO. So can we just, West Coast, you're going to get an assistant coach around the league that's up and coming. There's someone out there that'll do this job. Absolutely. And it'll do a good job. That's who you're getting. Yeah, no, Sim, Enough. Sim has no chance. He might coach South Fremantle. Tony no. McHale. <laughs> oh, don't don't oh, stay. Oh. No, there's some names that, well, and that's, I'll be 100% honest. If you can name me five assistant coaches around the league that you think would be able to do the job, we, we don't know because we're not in, inside we the Brisbane Lions or we Hawthorne. We wouldn't have known Kingsley. Of course. We wouldn't and, have known McRae. I've spoken to a, a guy at the footy commission who says, Brendan Laid, really good option. Now, he could be someone who they're speaking to. This subcommittee will be going around and doing their due diligence and talking to, now whether it's Andrew McWalter or whether it's Justin Lepich or whether it's Brennan Laid, they will get to a point where in the next four weeks, 
they're going to be pulling the trigger and saying, bang, you're the man. Do and we're in the last Coxie again. <laughs> last <Lots> Tuesday. <laughs> Like, well, I've got no issue with them going back a second time, mind you. They already have. That's what I'm saying. But yeah. <laughs> but I don't mind them. Well, <laughs> please. Coxie, please come and coach us, Coxie. Please, Victoria, can I go and scoy for a beer? Just come on. Just, just, <laughs> come on. Does that ever work at home? So you ask, you ask the first time, can I go for a beer with Scoy? And Victoria says, no, Mark. What do they it's say? Second um, time. What? Fi- fi- no, forgiveness is easier than permission. Ask me what. what you know, like, there's yes. a saying with, with. So by the 30, you're just doing it. Yeah, you just Is pull that what you say? Trigger. Yeah, just pull the trigger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but don't get home too late because uh, t- in my house, if it's silent, that's like torture for me. Really? I'd rather get abused and have pots and pans thrown at me, which doesn't happen. I, I get the much, silent treatment. Much. I don't like the silent treatment. <laughs> right. Do you get the silent treatment, remember? Oh, look. Oh, come on, be honest. I'm gonna, I I display, I give you almost like a therapy session here and you can't even tell me whether Alex gives you the silent treatment or not. I don't know. I don't know what sort of well, treatment Well, if you get him at three yeah. in a hippie club, you're not going to hear anything because she's asleep. <laughs> <laughs> still got a hippie club ringing in my ears. <laughs> Could we say something or not? Oh, very good, Skate. Uh, look, I don't know what I caught, mate. Uh, I'm <laughs> oh, trying you, to- yeah, you, seriously, you just love putting, getting me to spill my beans on my life and you just sit there oh, yeah, I don't know what happens. Yep. I just, you know, get home. That's and- why people love you, mate. <laughs> You're the people's champion. People were <laughs> chanting your name. I had a group of k- kids <laughs> chanting, Skeeter, 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 Skeeter. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, I have bads of world coming to. Will, Trump Sco- and Skeeter. Will Scofield, Mark Reddings, Joe Biden, uh, Shell Footy <laughs> Cast. <laughs> All right, let's whip through these because there's matchups oh. of teams that are completely done. Collingwood, Melbourne. I thought I'd seen it all. And then nine minutes to go, this one got lightning delayed. It went for another 45 minutes. I was listening to Triple M. Um, I, like, I like their work um, over in Melbourne. They never open the phone lines up. They sort of um, they do a show and then they'll close it and then the, someone will take the phone calls. But they opened the phone lines up when it was the lightning delay and it just made me piss myself laughing. There was just people ringing up, riling them up, really funny questions, like nothing about footy. And that you just imagine these blokes, they're nine minutes away from Friday night being over and they're just watch, like, sitting around taking phone calls from numpties. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. I, I, um, as I told you, I was um, I had been lunch and so I've, I'm on my phone. I had a little investment in this game. Of course you did. And at about 7.30, I'm... You know, I'm thinking, oh, what's happening here? Oh, this, this game stopped. Nothing's happening. And I'm, oh, this is going to be about 15 minutes, and I'm not, not looking at the footy. And I'm thinking, oh, geez, I've had a few. I can, this is, <laughs> is, my phone's blocked. Anyway, I found out there was uh, lightning. And um, Nick Dacos, Josh Dacos finished the season with 80 disposals in the last game. Yeah. They were interviewed together. Like, seriously, <laughs> can we just get them by themselves, possibly? Will Nick Dacos win the Brown, though? I think that's the biggest question out of uh, these two sides. Yeah, look, I've got him winning it. But then you keep hearing the likes of Lockie Neal of finishing the season really strongly and, and the Bont's been outstanding and Patrick Cripps. I mean, Give me put it this way, if, if there's those four in the mix right at the end, who would you – put it this way, I would want Bont and Pelly to win yeah. because he's getting towards that. Because well, Nick's going to win one. Yeah, exactly. I, I think I'd like to see Bont and Pelly win it just for the, the romanticism of Not it. Not Neal, he's had his share. Lockie Neal, Not- he wins three. That's Bobby Skilton territory. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, tell you what, it's going to be a brilliant count, the Brownlow medal, but what will be even better is the Jack Buckley medal. <sighs> We've released it on Back Chat. If you haven't seen it, we're having a huge night, Brownlow night, Monday night at the Leadable Hotel. Tickets are on sale, backchatstudios.com.au. They're selling very fast. We want you dressed up, frocked up. It basically last year just turned into a massive piss up responsibly. And it was bloody brilliant. And we're going to be releasing the Jack Buckley medal. So we're going to have our own count for the Backchat Backman of the Year. And it's going to be bloody good fun at Leadable Hotel, Skater. Absolutely. So- Let me just finish with this Friday game. And Collingwood support is a bit salty because mm. they've put online after uh, the result that they finished as it was equal on points with Carlton, but percentage behind them. If that free kick hadn't been paid at Optus Stadium for not handing the ball back to the umpire, they would have won the game oh, wow. and therefore been in the finals and wow. Carlton would have missed out. Wow. wow. It's amazing how people just cherry-pick bits right. through the year. But, yeah, so uh, anyway. If the ball bounces the other yeah. way, you probably don't win another. And Collingwood, you for mine, are still the most disappointing se- uh, team of the year, given your potential. You have not played finals after winning a flag, and that is the most disappointing element. Uh, Melbourne, they're in that box as well. They finished 4 day uh, Just quickly, the, the future of Petrarca is going to be the one that's going to get- create a lot of noise, see, maybe not inside Melbourne, but around the places. You know, how serious is this push for him to, to leave the club? If you had to say yes or no, does he get traded? 
I think it's hard. Like, for instance, Collingwood. How do they get the, the deal done with the draft hand they've got? Apparently, but, Collingwood's like the, the – that's the side. The front run. But how do they get it done? I mean, Melbourne supporters are saying, well, yeah, that's fine. You get Petrarca. We'll take Dacos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, actually, I did hear Carlton. Carlton for Mackay or Kerner. <laughs> but that's it. It's going to be hard to get this done. And Petrarca, yeah, I, I, the noise must have some basis to it. That's what I'm saying. Would you trade Harry Mackay for Christian Petrarca? Ah, that's a good question. Uh, if you're Carlton, yep. yeah, so you get Petrarca, you lose Mackay. Yeah, I can deal with that. That'd be a big trade. What do, what do you think? Uh, I think key forwards and good ones are better than good midfielders, and I understand how good Christian Petrarca is. But yeah. um, Decent argument. I just thought yeah. – I, I also – I've been watching the Christian Petrarca thing, and I don't know what he's gone through. I don't know what's happened, but I don't – I don't particularly watch on with these sorts of things where, one, his grievances with the club have become public. Two, grievances with the club. Like, what? what is it? What, what's that? Is it is it that bad that you need to blow up a five-year deal and you, you're meant to be the guy there and you're meant to be taking this club? Like, you look at Patrick, I look at Patrick Cripps. You reckon he's had grievances with the club? You reckon he's been through some tough times? You reckon times, he's yeah. had some adversity? Yeah, I just, wonder, just, yeah I just wonder whether how significant that King's birthday – Injury crisis or injury that was dealt by yep. the club. I don't know. Anyway, so I'd, what does he need to do? Leave the club? No, no, I'm not saying that. I'd, that there, that's there has my, to be that's, something more. But that's my point. There could be something more. If that's where, what it's over. Whether it's the Clayton Oliver stuff that's bubbling behind the scenes all year, I don't know. Whether there's other issues there, we're not aware of. Um, but yeah, I think probably most likely you'll be there next year. I'd most be in likely. the camp for Melbourne. Uh, if you're not going to back us in to do this, then let's get a trade done. See you later. Hawthorne defeat Melbourne. North Melbourne. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. I forgot which one they yep. were. North Melbourne by 124 points at Utahs. Uh, Kangaroos finished three wins, bottom two for a fifth year in a row. That's going well. Uh, Hawks started the season zero and five, and they make finals. That's a bloody good story. It's a great story. It's the story of the year. Yeah, let's be honest. And coach of the year, Sam Mitchell. Yeah, I mean, do they have a coach of the year in the All Australian? Uh, they do, don't they? No, don't but they, they definitely name a coach, a coach of, the of the year. So ordinarily, you'd think given that. John longmire has got Sydney finishing a game clear on top. That He should be the coach of the year. Yeah, it's a good but, point. But from what we've – and they finished seventh. And so you look back in 10 years you go, how did Sam Mitchell get coach of the year? But he he certainly deserves to be on the podium if he doesn't win it. Yeah, well, the way they've finished, 14 of their last 18 they've won. It's massive. Yeah. I, imagine if they could win the first final, just the momentum that they'll create. And I think they will. Yeah, I mean, they're, they've just got a, a team that has been able to – and they had 40 scoring shots against the Kangaroos. Now, the Kangaroos were, were terrible at the weekend. Uh, but the way they were able to do it, and it was a bit of rain around in Tassie, but Newcomb, Sicily's a superstar, uh, Moore, McDonald, you know, they've got they've got a great mix there. And um, D'Ambrosio, who couldn't get a game at Essendon. They got him for free. Got him for next to nothing. Now, he is an established member of this Hawthorne. So it's it's almost all Australia. Isn't it funny how you can struggle at one club, yet get the opportunity and nurtured. And Sam Mitchell's obviously had a big role in how he's transformed his career to be able to to find his way into a, a finals team. Yeah. I mean, if you've been a long listener of this, I, I've been Sam Mitchell's biggest you fan. Are. Um, you are. And, and I feel a little proven right, which is nice for once because I'm very, very often No, but you, you, you've seen at first hand, you've, you've experienced Sam Mitchell. When we talk about coaches, we only see the – the skin surface of, or the surface of what, what they're doing. He's they're, he's clearly got this team humming and, you know, they mightn't win the flag this year, no. but it's a beautiful platform to the, build. There there would have been times where he w- would have been doubting himself, no doubt. Starting 0-5 and five this year, he would have been thinking, has my list, Carl, has my list reset? But they had injuries, remember? They didn't I, have injuries I know, early. but he would have been oh, still, course. he's still going, gee, I, I don't know if this is the right thing, that guarantee you, but to do what they've done has been unbelievable. The kangaroos, let's just, just quickly. Just quickly. I mean, seriously, they are an absolute basket case of a football club. They haven't been off the bottom two for five years. Uh, how long until Alistair Clarkson questions start getting asked? Now, you say that the Kangaroos showed more glimpses than West Coast. Well, they won three wins. They won mm. three times, Skeeter. That is just – I mean, imagine being a North fan. It is just nothing. It's just a nothing – I can see the sprouts. I understand that. Well, there was a couple of games – again. Collingwood, they led by 54, still get beaten. But I, I thought we saw at times during the middle of the year a fair degree of growth. And unfortunately, that didn't play out in the last couple of games of the year particularly. 
Gold Coast defeat Richmond by 28 points. MCG, uh, the battle of the battlers. two of the worst sides in the competition. I'm going to give you this. Nothing. Um, don't even want to tell you what happened in the game. Sam Flanders was okay. But Dusty Martin got his lap at the G. I liked this. Oh, good. I'm glad you got a bit of a, a like soft spot. Because you got sometimes you're uh, a harder edge, uh, cold as ice, as they would sing in the classics. But I thought that that was a nice touch, and so it's, it's going to be a, a changing, significant change at, at Richmond with Bloody with earth. whether it's Shea, Shea Bolton, whether it's Dan Rioli, whether it's Jack Graham, uh, Baker, with, Baker, Tom Lynch. They're talking about possibly Marlon Pickett's gone. Marlon Pickett's retired. Dusty's that's, gone. Oh, that's a major list uh, turnover. They could they'll get a really good draft hand, but again for Adam Uze. As, you know, that's that's the worst season Richmond's recorded in the history of the club. Secure wooden spoon, pick one, so at least they will get a guaranteed first one in. Gold Coast, on the other hand, oh, they won back-to-back matches in Melbourne. Let's be, let's they finished with a reasonable. Oh God! Come Hang on, on, they beat Essendon after the siren. They finished. Put it this way: Essendon and Richmond. That's who they beat in Melbourne. So Scoey, I reckon they're the worst two Melbourne sides. Going Scoey, around. they've won eleven games for the year. Now, ordinarily. That will, if they finish a game and a half outside the eight, so I, I haven't got them down as my worst side for the year. Do they play finals next year? Well, I, you can never have any confidence in the Suns playing finals, can you? But I, <laughs> I, to win back-to-back games in Melbourne, I think I would play try and play some more games in Darwin because I'll just win those. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, suddenly you're up to twelve wins. Imagine, imagine having that as your slogan. You, you can never have confidence in Gold Coast playing finals, can you? Like, do you mate? Like, yeah, and it's true, that's, spot on. Yeah. Spot on. Brisbane defeat Essendon by 20 at the Gabba. Uh, Brisbane finished their season on fire. It was a hard watch this. It was very much a possession-based yes. game. And uh, one thing the Lions, if, if they continue in this theme, they will lose a final, which means they'll be bundled out. Their goal-kicking accuracy is still an issue. They kicked 11-21 at the weekend. Uh, so, you know, you can't ha- trust them. You can't trust Brisbane. They, they could they could kick 130 and they could kick 70. Yeah, I don't think they're winning the flag. I just think it's too hard for them from this position. But yeah, the Bombers, as we expected, though they they showed a glimpse in the last quarter when when the game was effectively done, kicking five goals to well, they kept the opposition uh, goalless, but five goals in the last term, just a bit of a uh, bit of wallpaper over the cracks. I know I wasn't a uh, give give games away um, to farewell people this year. Mm-hmm. Andrew Gaffman, one of those. Yep, Dyson awesome. Hipple. Well. You look at this now, Dyson Heppel comes in, has 34 disposals in his last game. You can't tell me he wasn't in their best side. I've got no problem with playing guys if they're in the side. But I feel like – so Ryan Marich was dropped for Andrew Gaff. Yep. I, I, I don't think that should have happened. Um, would you disagree or agree? Oh. He's, he's the future Ryan Marich. When you say he's the future, he's a mid-season draftee. I think he's going to be a serv- serviceable player. Oh, he's player. going to play more games than Andrew Gaff is next year, I reckon. Oh, I think you can yeah. say. Yeah. No, he's yeah. going to play more games than Andrew Gaff will next year. Of course, and yeah. And the year I, after that. I agree with that. But I, I don't, so, I'm, I'm not thinking he's any superstar. Anyway, yeah. that, 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 that's been a decision made. The Heppel one was made because they they were still in contention to play finals. But those numbers suggest he should have been playing last week anyway. Yeah, mate. Oh, yeah. I just think they've – I think Essendon missed a chance there um, and I think they'll regret what they did with that. So let's move on from Essendon. Brisbane, they'll challenge in the finals. Can't win a grand final, I don't think. Sydney defeat Adelaide by 31 at the SCG. Again, this was a bit of a nothing game. Not too much happened. Uh, there was some late outs. Um, Heaney was pulled out of the game. Um a few sort of things happen within, but but Adelaide for mine have just completely butchered the last couple of weeks of the season. Like they have, they they've got real issues. There's some clubs with real issues. Essendon being one of those, Melbourne being one of those, Adelaide being one of those, and West Coast being uh, and West Coast and Kangaroos and St Kilda, yeah, and Gold Coast and Richmond. <laughs> <laughs> apart from that, everyone else is travelling really well. But Adelaide have got like well, just okay. Let's let's, let's let's really just in brief nut down what happened last week, and that was the issue of Joshua Shelley being dropped because of not adhering to a team standards. Obviously, he's in their best twenty-two. It was a stance that Nix Matthew Nix made with his coaching staff. Out not knowing the other issues at hand here, good call, bad call. If you're trying to get the culture right, if there's an issue there with Josh Rochelle, weak call. Um, drop him four weeks ago when it still matters. This this is a nothing game. They had nothing to win. This isn't teaching anyone a lesson. If anything, it's just filthying up Josh Rochelle. I was serious last week. Someone go and get him. Someone go trade for him because 
all it does it puts all your leadership players in in hard positions in the media put yourself in a hard position as and Rory players. Laird didn't didn't help his teammate publicly Laird butchered it Dawson butchered it um, Nick's butchered it this could not have been handled any worse by Adelaide oh, it's just a complete butchering of a young player trying to teach him a lesson for what in the last week of the year like do mm. it when it matters well, I know five double I heard some of the audio from them and they were uh, as a collective questioning what Adelaide is standing for at the moment. And you talk about disappointing sides this season. They finished fourth last. Fourth last. And finals they, last year. They were, oh, no. No, no, they missed no. finals, but they, they were the team that was unlucky to miss. Mm. Yeah, I mean, there's a few in that category of most disappointing this year. I think Adelaide has to be pretty close to the top. Yeah. Well, that, that was the, the media performance this year took, took the cake for worst of the year. So they won, won that at least. Western Bulldogs defeat GWS by 37 points in Ballarat. It was a pretty good game. For most of this, and then um, GWS just you know ten minutes in the last, like Bulldogs put the foot down and it was over. But this was a close game. Yeah, for, uh, bear in mind the Giants were inconvenienced and uh, certainly struggled with Brent some Daniels, late outs. Brent was Daniels out, out. Tony Bedford. Yeah, so they had some late outs. I think Jesse Hogan almost missed the bus uh, looking at social media for the Giants. But yeah, so on that basis <clears throat> and playing in Ballarat, the Dogs, the Dogs had they had the Giants. Basically covered for most of this match. Yes. Um, Bont's numbers again, very good. Yes. He picks up the three, I'm guessing. Yeah, Close to I hope it. so. Gee, I hope he wins the it, round. Like. Ed Richards has got to be playing in the all or being selected in the All Australian team, doesn't he? He was I dropped, think. wasn't he? I think he dropped at the start. No, he wasn't actually. I'm thinking of Bailey Dale. But Ed Richards. Yeah, very good. Almost most improved player, I would have thought the Bulldogs. Yeah, very good. I've always, yeah, I've liked him a lot. But what happened with him was he went into the middle, uh, middle of the year, and started playing a lot more on ball. And yep. we sort of saw him as a sort of a running half backer, injected into the midfield. Yeah, really, really like him. Um, you know, Bulldogs, GWS, uh, you know, who, who goes further in finals out of those two? Well, on the basis that the Giants are in a qualifying final and the yeah. Bulldogs in elimination final, advantage GWS on absolutely. that basis. Yeah, absolutely. But that's on form. I think Bulldogs are playing better, but you've got to get past Hawthorne and then obviously win. You, like you, yeah, I think, you, I, yeah, I think Sydney and Port win those first two qualifying finals and then GWS will go on and play either Hawthorne or Bulldogs, can't remember, or they'll play uh, Brisbane or Carlton. So you'd want Brisbane or Carlton out of those. Yeah. So if you get that side of the draw, I can't remember exactly how it was matched up, but maybe you can t- tell me, Skater, or... No t- idea. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, let's move on for that one. I mean, putting in a Ballarat was just the dumbest thing I've ever seen. That'll be the last time they put a last... Bit of a breeze down there. Game. All right, let's have a look at yes, this. Sir, oh, here we go, Skater. Figure this one out. Right. <laughs> so... <laughs> Don't ask me. Wait, so Sydney's going to win and go there. GWS lose, right? Yeah. They go and play the winner of Brisbane Carlton. Yeah, we got that. So that's a good side of the draw. They then win that and they will be playing Port Adelaide in a prelim final. I think that's who you'd want in a prelim, not Sydney. Interesting. You've got three weeks of the final sorted out when we couldn't get one week in the home and away season. So Hawthorne wins the uh, first elimination final. They go on – wait, here. They go on and play Geelong. They'll beat Geelong because it'll be at the G, home game for Hawthorne. They then go and play Sydney. At the SCG. It's done. What? Well, yes. Just, just record that, Jade, and make sure that we play that back in about two uh, weeks. And then when- Sydney beat Hawthorne, Port Adelaide beat GWS, and it's a Sydney Port Adelaide grand final that Sydney win. Sydney Port. Yep. That's a bit of a snooze fest, really, <laughs> from, from Melbourne's perspective, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it Sydney and is. Port. Talking yeah. about snooze fest is St Kilda defeat Carlton. This was not no. one of those. Oh, gee. This was, I mean, yeah, we, we've been critical of scheduling. We've been critical of no Thursday night footy. We've been critical of quite a bit uh, this year, Skater. But having this game on when it was, right before the Freo game, this this is a perfect storm for the AFL. But all the AFL fans, everyone would have been glued to what was going on. Yeah, and if, you, if you're if you a Docker supporter, we know you're barracking for St Kilda. If you're a Carlton, if you're a Collingwood supporter, you're barracking for St Kilda. <laughs> yeah, there's so many different elements here. Uh, look, I, given the numbers that were out for Carlton... I thought they were very brave, but ultimately in the last five minutes, and let's just crunch this down, uh, they have domination of the match. They hit the front. Uh, Kemp has a shot at goal from 30 metres out after being given a free kick on a very slight angle. He misses. I'm in the 6PR box. I said to Luke McFarlane and David Mundy, 
Carlton will find a way to lose this. Just watch. And they <laughs> the got Oracle, the end. The it, was it Philippou who missed um, yep. from about 30 metres and a pretty simple kick as well. <clears> but <throat> the last 40 seconds, Scoey, I'm watching the game and I'm thinking Michael Voss is standing boundary side. It just saw a lot of space for St Kilda. And I'm thinking, how, how would... And I guess we couldn't see the whole ground, etc. But it felt like St Kilda were getting enough room to create something and give themselves one last chance, which yeah, they did. which they did. It's the 11th year in a row Carlton have lost their last home and away game. 11th? <laughs> like, I, yeah, I was watching with just a footy head on and I just I thought the same. I was like, I, I just can't see Carlton winning this. And even when they were in front, you thought they were going to have a chance. Exactly. Which they did. Carlton managed to choke and still make finals on the back of the Freo result, but it would have just been the most Carlton way in the history of the world to miss finals. Like Jack Higgins, snap over the shoulder, which is a bloody good goal, by the way. It, it, was. it wasn't just a set shot. But Adam Saad, just looking at the replay, Adam Saad, they defensively, they made mistakes. Put it this way, let me put this in brief. If you looked at, say, Collingwood last year and the last minute of a game, how they would handle – we saw it in the prelim final yep. – how they handled the ability yep. to keep the ball in tight. They're not there. They're not there. But they're, they're missing 11 of their No, no, no. I, I, I see. They're brave and, and they're going to get something out of that game. There's no doubt about it. And who they get back is, is the interesting one. They get Kerno back. They get McGovern back. Mackay? They get Mackay back. Did he not play? Oh, yeah, that, neither of them played. Sorry. I'll, yeah, yeah, no, he didn't I'll, play. You won't have me scared then. Uh, Mackay didn't play. Uh, McGovern was, as you said, a late withdrawal. Chera maybe back. I don't know. Like they, they should get five or six back in the next fortnight. So could we see a Western Bulldogs run from Carlton? So 2016 Bulldogs where they had seven changes to come into an elimination and then yeah, go for I, a run. Yeah, I, I will say no only because I think the, the competition is – is just on margins of, of that much that to try and get through an elimination final series from here, you, you know, I mean, Hawthorne, even with Hawthorne's form, I think they're going to have to have everything go their way just because of the quality of the opposition. St Kilda won three of their last three games. <laughs> they, they won six of their last seven. Three, six of their last seven. Yeah. So they went six and four to finish the last 10 games of the year. Yeah. So that's positive. It they're is the, positive. They're the only side in the bottom 10 teams to have a positive record for the last 10 games. Yeah, so essentially they finish outside the eight and lose a draft position by uh, winning. <laughs> no, they do. I mean, but you'd rather, you know, winning culture's better and we know that. Um, so, yeah, they, they're, a, they're a side they're still going to go to the draft, I think, yes. and, try and try and build their list. And uh, they win by two points yesterday in what was a – yeah, it, the AFL couldn't have hoped for anything better. Channel 7 couldn't have hoped for anything more because that would have come at about two minutes to six before their news, the final uh, final moments of that game. And uh, and Blue supporters then started to uh, throw out their, their Carlton scarf and put on a Port Adelaide scarf for the next three hours. Will Schofield, Mark Redding's Shadow Footy Cast. Oh, we don't get to go through what we frothed on. I mean, I frothed on that that result and Pavlich's reaction. And there's, yeah, we don't have to do that anymore, though. No, well. It, you frothed on a few beers on Friday. Oh, I, I did. No, I did. And, you know, it would have been nice to have you down at the event. No, I'll previous. definitely get to one of those events down oh, the track. Thanks. We'll see you next year. Um, make sure you remember about this uh, NFL uh, fantasy draft. Get those. Uh, and you're a Minnesota in. Vikings man, correct? Yeah. Okay. How did you remember that? Oh, because I know. I, I, you know um, I you're follow, a Patriots guy. Yeah. No, no. I'm a, I'm a 49ers. Patriots. You're 49 er Yeah. Well, I took the girls to Santa Clara. I like. I tell you what, I love George Kittle. He's just a, he's a he's a unit, but he's a very funny man. Yeah, very. very I like that. I'm throwing out a few names, not bad from you, Skater. All right, a couple of questions from our audience, Skater. This is from Stefan via YouTube. Scully, while I agree with, sorry, while I agree, Kelly Reed Yo is a good starting combo. Don't you think the lack of midfield depth at West Coast is a glaring issue going forward? Yes. Yeah, I do too. That's, that's no other way to put it. And yeah, there's. I'm trying to think of who the fourth guy in there. Like, who's the uh, for West Coast, Kelly Reed, Yo. And I then, mean, uh, Jimby was a player they used to use in that. No, he's era, a back, but he's, he's, he's now a back, he's going to develop off half back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there you go. Mm. They need to add depth seriously. And and and, if, and there's no leaks, but you think of those players. I mean, Reed's obviously got you know he's got his side, there. but but the you know the Yo yeah. Kelly factor. There's a bit of plotting nature in that. No? In that uh, anonymous, uh, anonymous fire YouTube. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Freo will get what they deserve. They are firing in April, May, and then Freo do Freo things when finals time come to get close and choke them. Build for the next thirty years. It's always next year for them. From anonymous, 
Okay. Mm. Fair enough. Uh, Scoey, I'm insisting people of your sporting celebrity should promote the Waffle Grand Final at Optus Stadium. 30,000 last year, crowd seeing the stadium filled like 1985 would be a pleasing spectacle and show WA truly love their football teams, not just for West Coast hanging in there supporting during the hard times. Skate, you'd be a fan of that, getting yeah. people around the waffle for the final series now. Yeah, why not? I mean, you know, September arrives and there's no, no footy here. Yeah. And this is a pretty even series. Uh, Claremont clinched their spot yesterday. South Fremantle misses out. Uh, East Perth get the week off and minor premiers having um, beaten Peel Thunder at the weekend. So the Thunder host the Swans this Saturday. Sunday, it's East Fremantle at Claremont, but at Claremont's home ground. So, yeah, absolutely. I'm looking forward to the, the final series. And it's tight. I hope Swans go well because they're the bit of the fairy tale story. East Perth haven't won a flag for 20 years. And East Fremantle, you speak of 1985. Well, that, that were the team that... Um, in the mid-80s at one a flag under Ron Alexander. So, yeah, I'm hoping big crowds get to Optus. And, you know, if it's East Perth and, say, Swans, for instance, I, I think we'll hit 30,000 easily. Bloody oath. I'd like to say that very much so, especially with Hamish Brayshaw at the head of the East Perth Royals. Now, a couple from Instagram here. Now, I, I've figured out what's happened here, but I, I will read them out. Margaret River wrote a fam. Sorry, Margaret River Farm. No, I tried the phrase, but the delightful ladies at the shelter tent at Froth Town have never heard of a dower defender. They had no idea what I was talking about. You're a what, they said. So there was the shelter, there was the shelter booth in the beer um, uh, the beer hall, which all the shelter boys, you yep. know, Tom and Paul and everyone was there. That was where you needed to drop the line. There was also the music tent, which had shelter everywhere, but that was uh, sort of that was sort of the music tent. So they were outside workers. No idea what a Dow Defender is. So I think people were going there and dropping, I'm a Dow Defender. And people were going, so you're a fucking what, mate? So um, the, I will say the Shelter Boys said they were pleased that clearly people listened to this show, but we did cost them quite a lot of money by this spitting out free pints all night. But there was Dow Defenders everywhere. Oh, really? And Dow Defenders were telling their mates that they were Dow Defenders. And it was an absolute <laughs> shit show. Cameron McVay, I'm a devastated as a forward just had to admit i'm truly a dower defender at shelter and they charged me 12 dollars for the privilege <laughs> will schofield lied to me cameron i didn't you just went to the wrong tent and this is from jace price scoey i know this is going to be um wait i know this is going to you because skeeter wouldn't even know how to use instagram correct something to think about i reckon the people would love a small segment separate show where you do a quick review of the waffle games coming up for finals. There's a couple of waffle moments there. Yeah, I'm happy to do, uh, do something. All right, we'll squeeze a little bit of waffle stuff into uh, there for you. Make sure you sign up as a Patreon. Uh, we're going to get through a bit of extra content for you just after this. That's ad-free content, by the way, as well as all the good perks you get. If you're a skeeter or you're a scoey, you can get that done as well. Skeet, that's us for the day, mate. Well done on the year. Yeah, we've got a few weeks to go yet, and we'll uh, just review some of the clubs on Thursday. And, uh, yeah, can't wait for Thursday week. When's Victoria get back? this afternoon oh boy 